Hello and welcome everyone. I am absolutely over the moon actually to have my guest today on the show. Megan is here and we're going to be talking about overcoming prolapse and the focus of today's conversation is really to talk about how you can move forward and be less afraid to get back into fitness after prolapse, after you recover from prolapse. There's so much hope in this story and there's so much inspiration and there's so much good energy here. You're going to love this. So before I have Megan pop on and share her story, I want to read to you the message that she sent me on Instagram. And she said, as follows. I have reversed my prolapse with your videos. It's been over three years. I work out five to six days a week, pretty intense. Do the rebounder, use hand weights, three, five, and 10 pounds and ankle weights, three and six pounds. I've lost over 120 pounds. And then she had some questions. She said, I was wondering if I'm bending over and picking up stuff correctly and engaging correctly during workouts and doing hips up at night. Should I still be doing the pelvic floor exercises? I feel like my pelvic floor gets tense if I add the pelvic floor exercises back to my routine, along with the five to 600 calorie burn workout I do. I guess now that I think about it, all of my exercises are pelvic floor exercises because I'm properly engaged and aware of proper core engagement throughout. So basically what I responded to Megan here is, first of all, I was so proud of her and so happy to hear about her improvement. And I basically said, listen, if you are incorporating and activating your pelvic floor correctly during your workouts, then there is no need to add additional pelvic floor strengtheners like isolated kegels or something like that on top of what you're already doing. You're doing everything right. You're doing the hips up time when you need it. You are, you know, integrating your pelvic floor into your activities of daily life and your exercises. So you're good. And that really just kind of started this conversation going a bit. And it led to this interview today because I just think Megan is the perfect example of a success story for resolving prolapse symptoms and getting back into fitness and really doing it the right way where she's not wondering with every specific move, like, oh, is it safe to do this move? She's figured out how to improve her awareness overall so she can then apply her pelvic floor activation to all sorts of different areas and just move forward with confidence. And so I have been talking for a long time, Megan, but I want to just officially welcome you. And please, let's go ahead and start at the beginning with a little bit more about your background and your story. And then we can have a bit more of a conversation about kind of where you are now. Okay. So basically, Three years ago, I had just given birth to my son, uh, two years or so before that, three years. And I, in that pregnancy, ended up, because of stress and whatnot, I ended up gaining like 120 pounds. Mm -hmm. Um, So I was very heavy. And I was trying very heavy for me and I was trying to work out really hard. I was straining, holding my breath during movements. I specifically remember that very close to the time right before this happened. And I will go back to in my past, small things that I realized that led up to that. Um, So it just happened one day I, I was straining And then one day I noticed something was there that had not been there before. And so I was actually had just moved to Georgia, lived in Florida my whole life. So I was in Georgia. I had to go to a gynecologist that I had never been to before. It was a man. And he told me that I had prolapse and that it was only surgery could help me now. And I was like, Okay. First of all, I was confused. I was, I felt so lost. I felt alone. I felt betrayed by my body. I felt betrayed by my past gynecologist who I had been with since I was like 16, had two kids with the same doctor and no one had ever said the words pelvic floor to me in my entire life. And I was like 32 or something. 
I, I really, it was probably one of the darkest moments of my life because I, you take for granted being healthy. And then all of a sudden I was faced with like a real issue that I knew nothing about. I had never heard any of my friends or family talk about this. And my doctor, none of my health educators at my high school, nobody. So I was like, I don't really know now that I think back what draw I felt to go to YouTube to look up this subject. I really just don't know. And, but I did. And there you were like an angel of light at the end of my tunnel. I, the first video I clicked on was my journey through prolapse um, and how I reversed it. And I thought, I say what now? And so I like couldn't get into the video quick enough. And when I heard that I could do it without surgery and do it on my own, I thought, yes, I am going to do this. And I think for the first time in my life, because I, I've had, you know, like everyone, you know, ups and downs in my life, but I have had a really privileged life. This was the first time that I had a real challenge that it was just me and myself and my body. And I just used you as a guide. And I was determined. I was determined. And I only used maybe the first video of your lift series. And I'm pretty sure it was under two months that I reversed it on my own. And then I just continued to do those simple movements consistently. And I had to learn to not over Cause at first I was, you know, really, I had, cause I remember you saying like you squeeze an avocado. Yes. You use the so, avocado. I've had so yeah. many people say it, like laugh and think that's weird. Never clinch an <laughs> yes, avocado. Exactly. It would be mean and horrible ruin the, you know? Um, and so, yeah, so I had my learning curve. I had my learning curve. Um, so there was a little tension at first. After I had no tension, then there was tension. So then I got over that. And then I realized just, just the feel. Mm -hmm. And like we were saying before, I really feel like just learning to connect and feel my own body in a way I had never before Mm -hmm. be aware of a muscle that was supporting everything all the time. I had never given this muscle a thought. And it had just given out on me because I never knew how to support the muscle, how to help it, how to work it out, you know? Um, so yeah, so that, that I, I was low, 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 and then you brought me hope and then I reversed it. But what led up to my PP, Mm -hmm. um, was I realized all the things that you said since I was 14, I've always sucked my stomach in, not engaged my abs, but sucked in to try to look thinner because I really had body dysmorphia pretty much my whole life. Um, poor posture. I would drive, I would drive like with my chin out and my back curved. And then you were like, if you can't feel your sit bones, when you're sitting, it's not good for your pelvic floor. So I'm always like, okay, guys, like, you know, so poor posture. My pants were always super tight. Always. Using around the middle. Always Mm -hmm. too tight. Always Mm -hmm. too tight in the middle. Okay. Also part of my weight gain was that we tried to have a baby and I was told I was pregnant. And then later I wasn't. So it was just like a false positive. I didn't have a miscarriage or anything. Um, So that really put an emotional damper for me and my husband and I gained 30 pounds and then I gained a hundred pounds with the bait with when I actually got pregnant. Mm -hmm. So that was part of the weight gain. Mm -hmm. Um, I was not active during my pregnancy. Mm -hmm. There was a miscommunication between the doctor. I, the, the one doctor I was going to, I didn't really care for him. He was a little prejudiced against bigger women. Mm-hmm. And so I told him, I said, I'm not really active. I'd like to be active. He's like, well, you can't just, you can't just get active. And I understand that you can't just go like crazy if you're pregnant, but he didn't know that I had been just a jogger for, mm-hmm. I could have at least been jogging, but I wasn't. And it would, and yeah, it, that, that was part of it too. 
the straining and always consistently holding my breath during workout positions. I can't tell you, I did everything like that, lifting everything, just holding my breath. And no one ever, no one ever tells you these things. So you don't even realize you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Nobody talks about breathing. It drives me crazy. (laughs) I think I literally, I yell at my six-year-old go. (laughs) I have my whole family while they walk. Even when my mom walks up and down the stairs, now I hear her. That's fantastic. I have my whole family. I'm like, men have a pelvic floor too, because I know you have a men pelvic floor uh-huh. video. Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> and, um, yeah. And just, you know, what was so crazy for this to happen to me, I really feel like those, that was the first time I felt true, like truly lost in my life, depressed, uninformed, betrayed, helpless, literally like nothing had happened in my life besides possibly my grandmother dying that someone wasn't like, it's okay. I'll help you. Like, let's get through this. Cause I have a wonderful family, a great support system. My husband is just, he is just the perfect husband. He tells me every day he's proud of me. He just, I mean, he remembers every little word I say. I mean, he just, and he's into everything that I'm into because I'm into it because he loves me and my mom it, all my life has always been there for me always been like it, you know don't worry about anyone else like we'll get through this and she's just she's my rock she's like my best friend um I'm gonna cry <laughs> so if, for those people to like not be able to help me because I had to help me. It was the first time I really was, I had to stand up and like take charge of my life and take charge of my body. And it was a big, big growing experience. I'm actually kind of thankful for it now. I, you know, I feel like everything happens for a reason. And I really just hope that somebody's watching that this can give them hope that your videos literally were the light at the end of the darkest day. And I just, I, I was just, I'm so grateful for you. I'm so grateful for your work. I'm so grateful that someone like you, you know, is willing to put the work in and that you really have really have just changed my life, changed it completely. I continue to be consistent. Um, And the stronger I got, I was worried about what I could and couldn't do. I was, I really wanted to run. And I watched a video, one of your videos of the woman describing something about like a feeling, a snap, a kind of, you know, change while she was running because it happened while she was running. Um, So at first I was very cautious. So I would do a low impact, weird, stridey strut thing because my mom kind of runs like that but it's actually really great because it's like a low impact mm-hmm. octopus run I call it <laughs> you know what I mean instead of like like that it's very glidey so I did that at first a lot around with my son in the jogging stroller and my older son I used to make him come with me because I was living alone at the time and so I would have to kind of leave him at home so we would all go all together And that was really great because we just did it together. It was really, it's really great if you can get your kids involved. I cannot get really get my kids too much involved. Now my six-year-old likes to jump on my rebounder, but that's about it. And my 14-year-old is like, he just wants to stay in his room and play PS4. So Uh, I um, I have a 14-year-old son as well. (laughs) It's like, can't you just do some exercise with me? I know. But you know, you're, um, you're setting a great example. Even if they're not doing it with you, they are watching and absorbing it all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every, every day. And even because he's in his room upstairs and even that I work out downstairs, I'm in my little workout cove here and I hoot and holler while I work out. Like I get so hyped up while I'm working out. I'm like, 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 and it's genuine. Like, you know, I'm like, I know he can hear me up there. <laughs> like, he can, like, I know at some point in his life, he's going to be like, you know, my mom was really consistent with this. And I just hope that that consistency yeah. and the persistence helps him in some way, even if it's not in workout yeah. stuff. 
like yeah. just the determination. Cause he, I, I know that he's proud of me because of some things that he said, cause he has seen me gain and lose the weight, yeah. you know, and he's old enough to like have seen my struggle. So yeah, that's, I'm really proud that the kids have seen me, you know, go through this. And I want to, then... I want to ask you, I don't want to interrupt you. Cause I know you have, no, some... no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm good. I'm sure. good. I'm but yeah. Tell me, so you did exactly what I encourage people to do with running when they want to get back into running. I encourage them. I call it loping is what that kind of like octopus run that you're talking yeah. about. It's not like a yeah. regular run. It's sort of this loping sort of gentle bounce walk, long step thing. <laughs> and that's, yes. that's one thing I encourage people to do. I have some other tips for running too, but basically I encourage people to start very slow and very gradual. And I think you did that. So you did the kind of loping octopus run. And I think you also didn't just jump into like a, a five mile run right away. Correct. You started slow. No. Yeah. I was so scared at first. Yeah. I was so scared. I did do your low impact workouts, like the separate little workouts. Mm -hmm. I remember I would do the lift mm -hmm. series, a lot of hips up and then the side leg with the squeeze the ball. Mm -hmm. Um, and really just, really just that one I did over and over. Yeah. <laughs> it was, the, it, again, it was the connection mm -hmm. that I was feeling. Um, right. Mm -hmm. The, and the lift mm -hmm. that lift, yep. um, so hips up connection. And then I would get up and do that video. Um, and then, yeah, just started off slow with the, with the low impact running and I had to have a surgery. So I, ha I did go to my gynecologist. I came back to Florida to the gynecologist that I knew. And I told him what had happened. He was like, Oh, well it's up there where it's supposed to be. So you did a good job. And I was like, Wow. It was like actual, because I knew that I had done, and this was only, this was not long. This was not a long period. This is under six months from the time it happened to me, um, like four months maybe, but I know I had already fixed it. Yeah. And then I came back to Florida and I was like, okay, I have a gyno come and like, I'm, I'm really excited to hear what he's going to see and say to me. And I told him what happened. And he was like, he's like, you fixed it. He's like, it's, it's bad. You're so he said, your bladder is up where it's supposed to be. And I was like, uh, it was just yeah. the, the, uh, exclamation, exclamation point at the end of my story. Like I did it. I did it. I fixed my body mm -hmm. because I was taking care of it. Yeah. And if I had only just known to do that mm -hmm. all the time before, it would have never, you know, would have never happened. But again, I just also, I hope maybe some young girl, 14, 15 is watching this or hears about this. I feel like it should just be talked about in school. Yes. When you first go to the gynecologist for your first pap smear, they should say, uh, you know, go to Dr. Bree's page. Yep. yep. <laughs> yes. Come on. Exactly. No, but you're, you're exactly right. And, and you had all the ingredients for success. What you did is you, you took action. So you got this news. You didn't just give up hope and succumb to something that, cause you didn't, I mean, some people, maybe they are just, okay, I'll get surgery, but you didn't want that. And you said, what can I do about this? Then you, you took action, you found information, you didn't go down crazy rabbit holes of scariness. You found something that was inspiring and you decided, I am going to do this now. I'm going to be dedicated. I'm going to be consistent. And then you made the connections in your body and started applying those connections to your daily life. The interesting thing is you never, I don't think you really reached out to me until this recently, recent time. Did you in the past? I don't. I don't know that I could actually you did. I messaged you on Instagram. Thank you so much. Or no, it was on a live video. Okay. Uh, and I was on there and I said, thank you so much. You helped me reverse my thing. And you were like, Oh, that's so wonderful. Okay, and I was like, yes. Oh my gosh. You talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I feel like you're a celebrity. You know, it's like oh you only see people on YouTube or on Instagram or whatever, an instant celebrity, which is kind of crazy, but you, but I hold you so high because yeah. of everything you've done for me. So yeah, it was just, it was, um, 
just such a pleasure to talk to you and share my story like this because I oh. just want to help. I just want, you know, I just want to help somebody. Feel- and you are. I mean, you are helping. Yeah. Just by you sharing the story is amazing. And and what I wanted to get at there about you, like the, the thing is you didn't you didn't ask me a, a bunch of questions, which is no problem when people ask me questions. Of course, I don't mind that. But you took initiative to make these connections and to just go with it. And I wanted to highlight that part of your story is you made the connections in your body and then you trusted yourself enough to move forward and to apply it to, again, getting back into running and getting back into jumping on the rebounder and getting back into using weights. And you just applied the concepts that you'd learned from my very basic information about breathing correctly, standing. No, no, no. They are beautifully basic oh, beautiful basic. that's why I didn't need to question you yes. you would say stuff and I would be like what about and then you'd be like and so and I'm like oh okay like your videos are so good that I didn't need to ask 10 more questions yeah. um yeah it, your videos are great and that's why you know I could do it on my own because you tell people exactly what they need to know to do it on their own yeah. um And then once I did that consistently and I felt, especially after I got that, okay, not an okay from the doctor, but his confirmation, you know, confirmation, exactly. I felt like, okay, like I was, so I am probably just this week back at my normal weight before all this started. Um, So while I had the weight on me. I was personally not happy at that weight. And I knew I didn't feel healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was determined to lose the weight. It took me a while to realize the food calorie deficit thing. Once I got that, it was maybe a year and I just dropped another 60 pounds. And then now I'm at a really great place. I have muscles I have never had before because I am actually using weights, which I never did any weight, anything before I'm using ankle weights, hand weights. I don't, I'm not into, even if I felt completely healthy and this had never happened to me, I would not be into the heavy squat weight thing. That doesn't really appeal to me. I'm just trying to really lean and tone now. Um, And so I'm very, I'm very grateful that I can do the workouts I want to do. And like you said, I didn't even realize, but yeah, like I pretty much do whatever I want. I do planks. Yeah. Oh yeah. And you can. I remember a video when you were like, they used to say, no, once you, this happens to you, don't do planks. Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, let's not close off all those doors Yes. and let's be positive and just, I was doing for, okay. I don't know if I can mention by name, the thing, the exercise program I use. Maybe we'll just refer to it in a different way. Okay. So, so basically it's a really cool workout program from California. The woman who does it, I love her and she's big into planking. Okay. And so I would always do the modified on my knees Uh because I felt like that was safer. Mm -hmm. just in the last two months, not even like a month, I started to do the actual planks and boy, are they hard, but I have seen a difference in my, in my strength in the last month. So now I'm like, wow, I'm really doing something that I thought I could never do, you know, but I really, um, do my best to tuck my tailbone a little bit and really engage and remember to engage my legs, my legs, my butt and my core and consistently be breathing, just consistent breathing. And I really just try what I'm working on now is form. I'm really just trying to keep a really good form, um, especially on the rebounder. And that I used to have a problem with incontinence at the end of my workout. Like I would be start, it's like an hour workout. Mm -hmm. So you're on the rebounder for like eight to 10 minutes. Then you get off and do something else. You do hand weights, then you get back on. So it's not for a straight hour, but at the end of that hour, my pelvic floor would tire a little bit at the beginning and I would have a little incontinence. 
maybe a, a year after doing it, now that doesn't happen to me anymore. And so for you, for getting back into the rebounder, even too, it was the same thing. You worked up to longer sessions. You worked up to using the more weights. You worked up to doing the full plank. You didn't just dive into any of these things. You worked up and you integrated your pelvic floor and core and the breathing. Yeah. So I did the cans. I did the cans with you at yes. first. Yes. I love and the canned so, food workout. It's a good intro to using weights. Just use canned food. I didn't have any weights. Yeah. I, I didn't even have any weights at the beginning. And I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm like, okay, like I, I want to do, I wanted to do it right. I wanted to follow your instructions perfectly mm -hmm. because I thought I knew, I felt in my heart, if I did that, then I could get where I wanted to go. And I'm, I'm here today. And look at you now. <laughs> so, I'm so oh proud of myself and thankful to oh you. Oh my gosh. This story <laughs> has been so inspiring. And, you know, honestly, I want to keep it just short and sweet so that people can just leave feeling pumped up and like, I want to go do something to make me go toward my goals. So I'd love to wrap us up right now with maybe I'm putting you on the spot, but maybe one kind of final little tip that you would give someone who's in, who's in your shoes, where you started when you first started this journey, what tip would you give someone who's just starting? You can do it. Mm -hmm. It's possible. Mm -hmm. And just consistency. And that's across the board in life with anything, yeah. you know, weight loss, muscle gain, the pelvic floor, everything is just consistency and routine is happiness to yeah. me. It has brought me also, I'm three years completely sober. So that all, it's just all so uplifting and, and you can do it. You can do anything that you set your mind to, um, nothing is impossible and you can get back to and do more than you ever thought you could. Even, even if this happens to you. <sighs> You are such an inspiration, Megan. I am just so grateful for you. Stop it. Oh, you are. Thank you so much. This is going to help so many people. So I just want to give you a hug and um, please oh. to, to say goodbye to our audience right now and anything else you might want to say to wrap us up. But I, I really appreciate you. Well, I just want to thank everyone for listening. And I just hope that you can go out in your day and do something you didn't think was possible, you know, and just know that you can do it. You can do anything as long as you set your mind to it and you stay consistent and you start with Dr. Bree's videos. If you do it the right way, you have yeah. to do it the right way. You can't skip, can't skip ahead in the videos. You can't, it's just in life. You can't just skip over stuff. You have to do the do work, chop wood, carry water. You have to do it. And if you do that, you will get there and you have to enjoy the journey. Yeah. Enjoy the journey. Cause it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. And you'll, and you'll look back and be so proud of yourself and nothing feels better than that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Carry on top. Thank you so much. Megan. <laughs> All right. Goodbye.